All right, welcome back. So we'll start with this one where we're asked to find the slope for the function six divided by x squared at the point x equals three. So we have to remember that in order to find the slope of a function at a particular point, we just have to take the derivative of this function and then plug in that point. So let's find the derivative of six divided by x squared. So the first thing I'm going to do is rewrite my function because I see that I have this x squared in the denominator and I would like to use the power rule. So I'm gonna move that x squared up so that we'll have a negative exponent that I can take a derivative of a little more easily. So we'll have the function is equal to six times x to the negative second power. And then now we are ready to find the derivative. So I'll write f prime of x, which is how we represent the derivative of a function f of x, is going to be equal to six times negative two, the exponent, times x to the exponent minus one. So then we can simplify, we'll have negative 12 times x to the negative third power. Then I'll rearrange this a little bit by moving my negative exponent back into the denominator. So we'll have negative 12 divided by x to the third power. So that's going to be our derivative for this function. But now we wanna know the slope at a particular point. So we'll plug that point into our derivative. So we'll have f prime of three is equal to negative 12 divided by three cubed, right? Because our x value is three and we're plugging it into the x in our derivative, which is cubed in this case. So now we'll simplify. We'll have this is equal to negative 12 divided by 27 because three cubed is 27. And then we can just reduce this a little bit and get our negative four ninths because each term has a factor of three that we can take out. So this would be the slope of our function at x equals three. Let's look at another example. So how about if we wanted to find the slope of the function g of x equals x squared minus three x plus four at the point one, two. So this is a different way that you might see it. Instead of giving you just an x value, you might actually get the specific point that you're interested in. So just like last time, we'll start by finding the derivative of our function. So I'll have g prime of x is equal to the exponent two times x. So I have two x and then two minus one, our exponent minus one. Remember that's our power rule. And then we'll subtract this part of the function as we take a derivative. We'll have minus three times x to the one minus one, which we know would be x to the zero power, which is just gonna be one. So in this case, the derivative of negative three x is just negative three. And then derivative of a constant is going to be zero. So plus zero. So then we can simplify this and our derivative will be equal to two x minus three. And we don't need to write plus zero because it doesn't change the function. So now we have our derivative two x minus and now we want to know the slope at the point one, two. Well, we're given this y value, but we don't really care about that. We just want to plug in the x value. So if we take our derivative, g prime of one, right, the x value of that point, we can plug that in and find that two times one minus three is equal to two minus three, which is equal to negative one. So the slope at the point one, two on this function is equal to negative one. So all we do to find the slope is find the derivative of our function and then plug in our x value for the point that we're interested in. But what if we were asked about finding the equation of a tangent line at a specific point for a function? So in this case, the point 314 on the function x cubed minus five x plus two. Well, this is going to be a similar process. We're going to first take a derivative of this function. We're then gonna find the slope at this point, And then we're going to use that slope and this point to make an equation of a line that would then represent the tangent line at that point. So let's start with our process and first take the derivative of our function here. So f prime of x is going to be equal to three, the exponent times x to three minus one our exponent minus one, minus five. Remember, if we have a constant times a variable to the power of one, the derivative is just going to give us the constant. And then we're going to take the derivative of two, which would be zero. A constant is always going to be zero when we take the derivative of it. So then we can simplify this to three x squared minus five. So that's our derivative for this function. But now we wanna know the slope at this point. So now we'll plug in our x value, which is x equals three, into our derivative function. So we'll have f prime of three is equal to three times three squared minus five, and that's going to be equal to 
3 times 9 minus 5, and that's going to be equal to 27 minus 5, which is going to be equal to 22. And that's going to be our slope. So we would say that this is also equal to m. That is our slope for the tangent line. So now we have all the pieces we need. We have our point and we have our slope. So now we're ready to put together an equation for our tangent line using our point slope form, which is why it's called point slope. We need a point and we need a slope. So now we have both, so we can now find an equation of that line. So remember, our point slope form is y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1. So we'll use that to find our equation. So we'll have y minus our y value from our point, 14, is equal to the slope, which we found to be 22, so 22, times x minus our x value, which in this case is 3 for our point. So then we'll simplify, we'll have y minus 14 equals 22x minus 66, and I just distributed this 22 to each part of this quantity, and now we add 14 to each side. So we'll have y equals 22x minus 52. And this right here would be the equation of the tangent line at the point 314 on this function. So that's our process. We take the derivative of our function, we plug in the x value of the point and get the slope at that point, and then we use that slope and the point we were given to find our tangent line. Let's look at another example. So here we are asked to find the equation of the tangent line at the point x equals nine for the function y equals the square root of x plus three. So this one's a little bit different because this time we are only given an x value and not an entire point of interest. So this time we're going to have to do a little bit of extra work to get that y value so that at the end we can create our equation for the tangent line. But just like we did last time, let's start by finding the derivative of our function. So when we take a derivative of y, we have two choices for our notation. We could write y prime or dy dx to represent a derivative. I'm going to use y prime this time to save a little space because we're going to have to do a little bit of work here. But before we do that, let's first redefine our function because I see that I have a square root here that if I want to use the power rule and really visualize what I'm doing, I'm going to rewrite that to have a power of one half for that x rather than the square root. So I'll redefine this to be y equals x to the one half power plus three. So now I'll take my derivative and use that y prime notation we talked about just a little bit ago. So I'll have y prime is equal to the power one half times x to the one half minus one power, right? We always subtract one from our power using the power rule. And then a derivative of a constant three is zero. So we'll have plus zero. So then we can simplify this to one half x to the negative one half power because one half minus one will be negative one half. And then we can simplify this by moving our negative exponent and our x down to the denominator so it's positive. And this will be equal to one over two times x to the one half power. And we could also change this back to the square root. So we'll have one over two times the square root of x. So that's going to be our derivative for our function that we were given. So now we want to find the slope at x equals nine on this function. So we have our derivative, which is a representation of the slope for any point on the function. So we'll take our y prime and we'll plug in nine. And so this is our notation for that. When we plug a value of x in to a derivative of y prime, we have y prime of nine. And we will write that this is equal to one divided by two times the square root of nine. We plugged in our value of x, which is nine in this case, into our square root down here. So then we'll simplify, and we'll get that our slope is equal to one over two times three, because the square root of nine is three, which is going to be equal to one sixth. And that's going to be equal to our slope, m. That is our slope at x equals nine for this function. So we're almost ready to put together our equation of the tangent line, but we need one more thing. Remember, for point slope form, we need a point and we need a slope. We have a slope, but we only have half a point. We have the x value. We also need the y value. So in order to get that, we just have to plug our x value into our original function. So if I plug nine into our equation, we'll have y equals the square root of nine plus three, and that's going to equal three plus three, which equals six. So now we have that our point is actually nine, six. So now we have everything we need to put together our equation of a tangent line. And once again, remember that our point slope form is y minus y1 equal to the slope times x minus x1. And so now let's plug in everything we have and find our equation of the tangent line. So we'll have y minus our y value 
six equal to the slope, which we said was one sixth times x minus our x value, which we said is nine, or we were actually given that value right at the beginning. So then we'll simplify and we'll have y minus six equals one sixth x minus nine times one sixth, which is going to be three halves. And then we can simplify this further by adding six to both sides. So then we'll finally have that this is equal to y equal to one sixth x plus nine halves. So then we have our equation of y equals one sixth x plus nine halves. And that is the equation of the tangent line for this function at the point x equals nine, or more specifically, the point nine six. So now that we looked at how to find equations of tangent lines, let's look at how do we find horizontal tangent lines, which are tangent lines that have a slope of zero. So first we have find all the points where there are horizontal tangent lines for the function x squared plus x. So if we want to find horizontal tangent lines, we have to first realize that in order to do this, we first need to take a derivative, and then we need to think about how to use that derivative to find what we need. And remember, the slope of a horizontal tangent line, as I've said, is zero. So we can set our derivative equal to zero because the derivative is slope and then solve for x to find which x values give the slope of zero for our function. So let's first take our derivative of our function and we'll have that f prime of x is equal to two times x plus the derivative of x, which is going to be one. So this is our derivative in this case, f prime equals two x plus one. So then what we're going to do is we're going to set this derivative equal to zero. And that's going to give us our x values where our horizontal tangent lines are. So we'll have zero is equal to two x plus one. So now we'll solve for x by first subtracting one from both sides. So we'll have negative one equals two x. And then we can divide both sides by two. So then we'll have x equals negative one half. So now we have the x value where we're going to have that horizontal tangent line, but we want the whole point. We want to know what the y value is too. So let's plug our result here back into our original function to find the y value. We don't want to plug it into the derivative because the derivative is slope. It's not going to give us what we want. We want to know the y value of this point on the original function. So we have to plug this value into that original function. So we'll have f of negative one half is equal to negative one half squared plus negative one half. So that's gonna be equal to one fourth because negative one half times itself will be one fourth minus one half, which is going to give us negative one fourth, which would be our y value. So then finally, we can say that our point on this function right here that will have a horizontal tangent line where the slope is zero is going to be the point negative one half, negative one fourth. So let's do this again. Let's find some more horizontal tangent lines. This time we have the function f of x equals x cubed minus 3x squared. And we want to find all the points where there is a horizontal tangent line for this function. So just like we did last time, let's start by taking our derivative. We'll have f prime of x is equal to 3, which is our exponent, times x and our exponent minus one, minus three times two, which is our exponent, times x to the two minus one power. So we'll simplify this and we'll have three times x squared minus six times x to the first power. So we don't need to write that. So here is our derivative, three x squared minus six x. So now we'll set our derivative equal to zero and solve for our values of x. Because remember, the derivative represents slope. So if we set it equal to zero, we'll find all the x values where the slope is zero. So we'll have zero equals three x squared minus six x. And I see an x in each one of these terms that I can pull out that'll allow me to solve for x a little bit easier. So we'll have zero equals x times three x minus six. And that will tell me that x equals zero is one of our values. And then we can set this term equal to zero as well. So we'll have three x minus six equals zero. And that will give us that three x equals six if we add six to both sides. And then if we divide both sides by three, we will get that x equals two. So that is our other value of x where we're going to have a horizontal tangent line. So our two points are x equals zero, and x equals two. So now we just have to plug these values back into our original function to find the y values that correspond to them. And then we'll have our two points on this function that have horizontal tangent lines where the slope is zero. So we'll plug in x equals zero first and we'll have f of zero is equal to zero cubed 
minus three times zero squared. So this one is zero. And then if we plug in our x equals two into our function, we'll have two cubed minus three times two squared, which is going to be equal to eight minus three times four, which is equal to eight minus 12, which is equal to negative four. So now we have our two points at which this function has a horizontal tangent line. So here we have zero, zero, and two, negative four, as our two points that have horizontal tangent lines on this function. Finally, let's look at the function f of x equals x cubed plus x and see if this has any horizontal tangent lines for any points. So just like we did before, let's take our derivative of our function and then set it equal to zero. So we'll have f prime of x is equal to three times x to the third power minus one plus one, remember the derivative of just a variable to the first power is going to be the coefficient of that variable, which in this case is one, and then we'll simplify and this will be equal to three x squared plus one. So that's our derivative. And now let's set it equal to zero and solve for our values of x. We have zero equals three x squared plus one, and then we can subtract one to both sides. So I'll do that. We'll have negative one equals 3x squared, and then we'll divide each side by three. So we'll have negative one third equals x squared. Uh-oh, we can't take a square root of a negative number and get a real number back. In fact, we'd have to use an imaginary number here, which we are not interested in for these functions. And so because it's not a real value, we actually don't have any real solutions to this equation. We don't have any real values of x that are going to be equal to a slope of zero. So in this case, we can't solve for x, so we make the conclusion that this function, f of x equals x cubed plus x, doesn't have any horizontal tangent lines at any point on the function. So here our conclusion is no horizontal tangent lines for f of x. And that is going to be our answer for this problem. We just don't have any horizontal tangent lines. So I wanted to at least show you one of these because sometimes when you go to solve for zero, you're not gonna find any points that have a slope of zero because some functions just simply do not have horizontal tangent lines anywhere. So that's all the examples I had for this topic. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments. But if you don't have any questions, that's all I have for now. And I hope to see you in the next lesson or example video. But until then, I will see you next time.